Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I warmly welcome all of you to this free and virtual agricultural training webinar, module four, legumes and pro legumes production, organized by the Public Service Credit Union Cooperative Society. My name is Michelle Shah, agricultural engineer with 26 years of technical experience and engineering solutions. During these unprecedented times caused by COVID-19, we, the members of PSCU, are doubling our efforts to engage the public by harnessing digital technologies to bring training and development capacity initiatives to a much wider listening and viewing audience, and to benefit from training opportunities such as this one. The house rules for this webinar are as follows. The training session is divided in, in two parts, and there will be a five-minute intermission halfway through the presentation. And the administrator will have all participants muted. You may also keep your videos on during the presentation. During this presentation, you may ask questions by a raise of hand located at the bottom of the screen. The administrator will then inform me when this happens and I will then answer the questions at that point. Another way in which you may ask questions is by using the chat box, which appears on the right side of your screen and when you select the icon. You can also ask questions via the e email michelle.shah at pscutt.com as appears on the contact slide at the end of the presentation. At the end, you will have a few survey questions to answer, which will come up after the webinar in a brief questionnaire on what you thought about the training. I encourage all of you to take full advantage of this online training material, which is being made available to you via the website on, on the video recordings. You, I hope you make practical use of all this information in future and all participants will be receiving certificates at the end via an email. Sessions are being recorded and it, this, they will be posted on the PSCU website in due course. Once again, I welcome all of you and I look forward to seeing you again in many more sessions to come and I wish you a very fruitful learning journey. I thank you. Let us now start. I'll share my screen. Okay, today we start module four, legumes production. These are the legumes which we grow here in Trinidad. Um, the, they are pigeon peas, bodhi bean, same, green bean, padu, which I will explain to you, um, tamron bean, jack bean, and winged bean. Some of the cultural practices which we use for growing beans are for bodhi. They take six to 10 days to, to, to sow, from sowing to germination. The spacing are one and a half feet within rows and three feet between rows. Time to harvest are usually five to 10 weeks. And common pests for bodhi are aphids, mites, shot hole, and beetles. Common diseases with bodhi bean are the cowpea and the severe mosaic disease. Pigeon peas, with the Tobago pigeon peas in this case, we have sowing to germination takes 10 to 15 days and the spacing is one and a half feet to three feet apart. The time to harvest, we have four to five months and the pods are no, normally snapped off from the stem when they are harvested. The common pests are the moth larvae and the diseases are the fusarium. Legumes, the definition of legumes. It's a, it's a plant in the family leguminosae or, or the fruit or the seed of such families. Legumes are grown agriculturally primarily for their food, grain seed, 
example, beans and lentils, or generally pulse. And they are used as for livestock forage and as soil enhancements for with, where they supply manures in the form of green manure, which enriches the soil. The legumes usually have nitrogen fixing bacteria, which provides nitrogen to the soil. It, these, these bacteria are formed on the root nodules. Cover crops like legumes are essential for restoring degraded soils. Legumes are particularly rich in protein and they have 20 to 40% in dry seeds depending in, on the species. They also contain fiber and micronutrients. So legumes are usually used a lot by persons who are um, on vegetarian diets and so on, and they are very, um, very healthy crops. Benefits of the legumes. These, these are some of the benefits. They provide feed and food. So the, when, when legumes are grown, the, the fruits and the vegetables provide that to the nutrients and so on to, to human health. The crop, legume crops, they lower the carbon dioxide and nitrogen oxide emissions. And they contribute to carbon dioxide sequestration. So it, 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 is, it contributes in a positive way to um, climate change. So it will prevent greenhouse gases and so on. Legume crops improve the soil fertility as well by providing nitrogen to the soil. This is done by the biological nitrogen biological fixation on the root nodules, as you see here in the diagram. The nutrient content of legumes, they, as I said, they are high in protein and they contain carbohydrates. However, the, the, those containing dietary fiber and res resistant starches, like uh, these are indigestible by human digestive tract and really are uh, digested when broken down by enzymes released by bacteria located along the large intestine. And in that, that when that occurs, it causes bloating. Legumes contain significant amounts of vitamins in the group B, but they lack the vitamins A and C. Legumes such as soybeans and peanuts, which are, they, they are all low in fat. Those are not, however, grown in Trinidad. So I, at the end of the presentation, I will let you know which are the ones not grown in Trinidad, and I'll give you a brief um, description of those. Pulses, the definition of pulses, according to the FAO 1994, they are a subgroup of leg legumes and they are crop plant members of the leguminosae family, known as the pea family. Legumes harvested for the dry grain are classified as pulses. Pulses grow on pods and come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and colors. And there are 11 types of pulses, according to the FAO, such as dry beans, dry broad beans, dry peas, chickpeas, which is also known as chana, cow peas, pigeon peas, lentils, and pulses. So this here is a picture of pulses in the form of pigeon peas. This is what is the pigeon peas pods look like. The list of legumes grown here in Trinidad, I, I, as I called earlier, they, they are given by scientific names, and these are the names, their scientific names attached to them. Bodhi, um, pigeon peas, same, green bean, padu, tamarind bean, jack bean, and wing bean. And the picture depicts the legumes, which are the, the way in which they are grown and they are seen tied to trellises where you have poles and string tied onto the poles so that they can, um, the vines can grow along these, these strings.
benefits of planting the legumes. Legumes fix nitrogen in the soil. Cover crops like these legumes are essential restore for restoring degraded soils. Legumes are rich, very rich in protein and they are easily stored and harvested. So these are just a few benefits of, of the legume. They, they are used as green manure as well because they enrich the soil um, when with, with the, um, the, the, the shells and so on when they are degraded. The germination and sowing of legumes. Firstly, you choose an open, full sunlit planting area as for the pigeon peas, but as they thrive very well in drained soils and in a hot environment, and the plant will not grow in waterlogged areas. Sow the seeds one and a half inches deep, and they must be on rows one and a half to three feet wide. The, the distance between each one should be at least one and a half feet apart uh, though. Look out for seedlings within three weeks after, after um, planting and they grow very, they grow quite slowly. And when you apply soil fungicides, they, that will destroy um, the fungi which may attack in the planting hole and the insecticides are applied to prevent attacked by soil insects, such as cutworms and mole crickets. So five seeds per mound when you are planting in rows and at a depth of two to three inches. And thin out at around one to two weeks after germination, leaving three to four healthy seedlings per mound. So you must thin it to, to allow more growth when, when, when you that is a form of um, pruning when you thin the, the um, plants. And short plants get at least 12 and a half hours or less of daylight to initiate flowering and seed production. These are just some diagrams of the beans and um, the flower of a pea plant. So the beans, as you see, is made up of a cotyledon, which, is con which contains all the carbohydrates and food feed for the plant. Then you have a radical here, which is like the root part, and the epicotyl, which is the leaf. So the entire um, bean is called the embryo. And it is called a dicotyledon because it has the two sides of the bean. Unlike um, other seeds, if it is one, uh, one part alone, it will be a monocotyledon, but this is a dicotyledon. And in this photo, you see this is how the, seed, the bean looks when it grows. The flowers of the pea is, has the appearance of, um, this is the longitudinal section and it is made up of the um, petals, the sepal, which is the part connected to the stem, the anthers, and stamen. So this is just a, a brief description of how the, the bean and the flower looks. The difference between beans and peas is the way in which they grow and for instance, this diagram shows the growth of um, beans, which is called epigeal germination. And it is different to the way in which peas would grow. So I will explain to you the difference. The cotyledons come above the soil surface into the air and light due to rapid growth and elongation of the hypocotyl. So the cotyledon, which is this circular part, it, 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 um, it comes above the ground as shown in the, this last part. And that is where um, the, the green part that makes the food to be used by the stem during the growth. So because of the fact the cotyledons function as they function as leaves here when they come above the ground and then they are continuously 
um, used to feed the plant until it drops off. Then uh, when these cotyledons drop off, they, they, they become, the, the seedling becomes um, mature and independent. So this is how the, the germination of beans take place and it's called epigeal germination. On the other hand, for um, growth of peas, it is called hypogeal germination because the cotyledon remains below the soil surface, unlike um, the beans. And it remains in the soil where the apicotal stem, which is the stem that is above the cotyledon, it elongates and raises the pumul out of the soil upwards. So in this case, the cotyledons, they don't, turn, they don't turn green, but they stay below the ground where eventually they are used up and they, they, they eventually feed the, the plant until the, the, um, the, the leaves and, and the, the seedling grows to above the surface of the soil. So we have, in this case, hypogeal germination. And that occurs for peas, which is um, on, uh, opposite to the way the, the growth of beans take place. Let us talk about pigeon peas. The, the variety grown in Trinidad is the Tobago pigeon peas. And as is shown in the picture here with the pod looking a mature pod, which is brown in color, and the flowers are yellow and sometimes red, yellow and red in color. Seeds that are locally um, produced are produced in the National Seed Bank. And you can get the actual seeds to plant if you don't have any seeds available from that. From the pigeon peas, the description now. Um, the peas are a legume that is widely grown in the Caribbean, and it is also known as gungo beans. Flowers are bell-shaped blooms and are usually born in pairs and maybe yellow and red in color. It is grown as a pulse crop, harvested for the dry seed or eaten green as cooked vegetable. The seed pod hulls and threshold waste of the harvested plants make an excellent nutritious high protein forage for livestock, particularly sheep and those type of Cultivating the peas, pigeon peas are confined to flowering and production during the three month span. The crop is also low yielding due to its extended period of vegetative growth during the flowering period. Pigeon pea tolerates various soil types, low nutrient levels and will grow well in the soil pH of five to eight. So that is relatively alkaline in nature. Fertilizing of pigeon peas is not recommended as the plant grows well in soils with low phosphorus levels. Pigeon peas cultural practices. As the peas are a member of the legume family, they produce bright yellow pea-like flowers and followed by seed pods starting green in color then turning brown as they dry. Keeping the plants free from all weeds, especially during the first six weeks after seedlings emerge. And ensure that the plants get enough and uniform watering, even if the plant can survive up to six months in very dry conditions. Manage pests and diseases. So these are basic practices to, um, for healthy plants. You usually try to keep weed it during the first six weeks after seedlings emerge and control pests and disease as time passes. Mulching of peas. Peas don't, do not have deep roots, so it, it is important to keep the soil around the roots very moist and cool. You can start mulching when roots of the plant are two inches in length. And peas prefer mulches made of chopped leaves, compost, leaf mulch. Keep in mind that you have to add more mulch as the plant grows. So the purpose of having this, these um, mulch around the plant is for keeping it, it moisture in the soil and for keeping the temperature lower than um, if it was directly exposed to sun. 
managing of pests and disease in pigeon peas. We generally um, have most pest problems um, with, with larvae that hatch from moth eggs. These feed on the above ground plant parts and eventually bore into the de developing pods to feed on the seeds. So these pests can also be controlled by Bt insecticides, meaning these are um, a species of bacteria that um, live in the soil. Those are Bt um, insecticides. They attack the bacteria that live in soil or they are managed through naturally occurring insects. Um, so you have naturally natural biological um, control of pests in this case. The most significant disease problem is the fusarium, and that attacks mainly at the seedling stage. But this occurrence is rare, and if presenting, it can be controlled by fungicides containing metiram. The harvesting of the pigeon peas now, you monitor development as time to maturity goes, and that may vary due to the seed variety, the temperature and duration of exposure to sunlight. Flowering will generally occur between 65 to 80 days, and creation of mature seeds requires 50 to 75 additional days. We pick seed pods when they are about two to three and a half inches in length and one and a half inch wide. And when mature, they will be flat, covered with soft hairs, and the round on oval seeds may be light beige to dark brown. Advantages of the pigeon growing peas. Fission peas are a very hardy plant and 60% self-pollinated and it requires no, no real fertilizer use. It is fast growing, an excellent plant to improve the health of the soil due to nitrogen fixing qualities. It is easy an easy crop to manage as an annual shrub and it's an, a perennial, perennial plant growing one to two meters in height. It, it has a productive lifespan for up to five years and is a prolific producer of seeds. It can be grown along fences and in, hedge, in, in a hedgerow, providing shade cover for short-term crops. And it can be pruned and trimmed and the, the leaves used as feed for animals. It's a good source of dietary fiber and various vitamins such as magnesium, phosphorus, potassium. And it's an excellent source of vegetation protein, vegetarian protein. The uses of the pigeon peas, though it's mainly cultivated for the edible seeds, um, they are considered a multi-purpose species since the stems and branches can be used for basketry. Another use would be um, as a raw material for paper pulp. That's more in, in other countries, they will do that. And as a windbreak cover crop, shade plant, and in, as green manure. Let's look at the body bean plants. These, this, this is a photo of how body bean grows along chalices. There are two types, the long type and the short type. The long type, the, the varieties are the local one yard red tip, the local half yard, green arrow and oriental wonder. The varieties in the short type are the Los Banos, Bush Sitao, the UW resist and the green pot. All seeds can be locally produced by the National Seed Bank. Germinating and sowing body. Firstly, we mix a handful of well rotted manure with the soil in each planting hole or a deep plant pot. 
Then you dig a hole two to three centimeters deep. Then you sow two to three seeds in each hole or plant pot and cover lightly with soil and water lightly twice a day. Plant most varieties along trellises or fence to support as they climb. Place the seeds of, the, of both short and long varieties about one and a half feet apart within rows and three feet apart between rows. The germination will occur within six to 10 or 14 days. Do not thin it, but if the seeds do not sprout, then dig some, some of the seeds up and check for rot or insect damage. Then water the plants daily during dry periods. Bodhi grows best in open sunlight and in well-drained rich soils, but tolerates acidic soils. If planting several Bodhi plants in the same area, use the recommended spacing for that variety. Growing Bodhi in, the con in containers. So we see this is how um, it is set up with um, the pot. You take the seeds out of out and you allow it to dry, then place in small pots to germinate. Following that, they, they will develop into seedlings and transplant them into the large pots as shown here. Bodhi should take about three months before it begins to bear. Land preparation. If you have to put um, grow them on, on larger air, land areas, they should be flat or undulating top, topography. And the legumes are planted in wide range of soils from well-drained sandy loam high in organic matter to clay with pH of 6 to 6.5. The soil test should be done before cultivation um, to determine the pH and the nutrient requirements of the soil. Surround so one meter ground of the sowing pot uh, should be prepared well enough to remove the weeds and residue of the previous crops. So you clear a one meter area around the, the, the spot where you go to plant the um, seedling. The sowing spot should be dug well and make fi fine soil before sowing. The plant spacing for these, the long body type would be two feet, for the unstaked body are uh, three feet and for the short bird body are uh, one and a half feet. Land preparation costs can be adjusted as necessary based on the existing conditions of the land. Sowing of legumes, the beans can be cultivated together with corn in a kitchen garden or as mixed cropping and the corn plant functions as the trellis. It is good to sow seeds seven to 14 days after compost filling in the hole. So sow the two, two to three seeds in a two to three centimeter deep trench with sunken seed bed types. The gap between a plant and the next should be about one and a half feet, as I mentioned before for the short body. After a month of germination, a healthier seedling should be kept and the rest should be removed. The trellis supports, there are various types and you get more yields when supporting the vine using trellises in a vertical manner as shown. The wooden stakes or tree branches can be put near the plant as a trellis. Teepees may be constructed using strong wooden sticks to stop fully laden bean plants from collapsing under their own weight. Seedlings can be tied by coiling them gently around the sticks and then securing them with string. Pinch out the growing tips when plants reach the top of the trellis and all the supports to encourage the side shoots lower down. Pruning of the legumes, pruning and training the vine over the trellis is very important to get maximum yield from the plant allow the plant to grow without any lateral branches and tendrils up to about 12 nodes of the stem. 
then the main stem should be pruned. It needs to give support to the tendrils to go up, including ne necessary pruning. pruning. By this pruning, nodes are uh, Nodes usually will come up during after pruning, and we should not allow lateral branches to, to grow up below the trellis if possible. Count the lateral branches to 12 nodes and prune the rest. And then remove all lateral branches and tendrils as well. Train the vine over the trellis system by tying the laterals with a string. Irrigating of legumes. Legumes need a consistent amount of watering, especially during dry season. Green beans require one to two inches of water per week. And they do well with in-ground irrigation systems as opposed to hand watering from above. Peas don't mature in waterlogged soils, but pea seeds should be soaked in water prior to planting. Fertilizing of body, we have we, we must encourage root growth when planting body. Choose a complete fertilizer high in phosphorus, such as the 12-24-12. So the, the this is the NPK formula, P being the phosphorus. So the 24 is high in this case. And these fertilizers can easily be found in garden shops and you apply one teaspoon two weeks after germination and at least two inches away from the plant. To support the plant growth and good yields, continue fertilizing every 15 days with granular NPK fertilizer, high in potassium. So the last number would be the K, potassium being 17 and use one teaspoon per plant for the duration of the plant's life. Note that use as advised and too much fertilizer applied could, could kill the plant. So you be, be careful not to apply too much or too close to the plant. Hi, Michelle, we have a question. Yes, yes good afternoon. Annie. Good afternoon, Annie. I think you need to unmute your mic. I, I, I'm not hearing. Good afternoon. Could you unmute the mic? I think she, she, I don't think she's hearing. She, she's not unmuting the mic. Okay, um, I'll continue weeding legumes. Weeding is necessary for loosening the soil and controlling the weeds. First weeding has to be done at the time of putting additional fertilizer when the plant gets four to five leaves after two to three, two, two to three weeks of sprouting. The second weeding would be better at the time of covering the plant root by soil. That is after one month of the first weeding. Control of pests in legumes. We have basic pests that attack, which are the caterpillar leaf miners. Then you have aphids and beetles, and we have pod borers and mole crickets. With the caterpillar, the symptoms include um, the green part of the leaves um, turning white, yellow, or looking like paper due to the, the caterpillars eating the green part of the leaf. And then finally, the plant would remain without any leaves. We, this is managed by collecting the, the, the parts of the plant which, which are um, affected by the caterpillars and destroying them. If the attack is massive, sprinkle a solution of 
dextromethrin and with uh, um, one milliliter per liter of water and you, you, you um, apply this to the, to the plant. Pesticide, you can also use pesticides containing neem. For aphids or beetles, um, the symptoms of uh, plants are infected and cannot grow or turns yellow. Then the management, we would sprinkle a solution of soap and water on the leaves or areas invaded by the aphid. Sprinkle a mixture of tobacco and water as well. You may also sprinkle ash dust targeting the masses of the aphid. Protect ladybugs, which are friendly insects and they, as they prey on the aphid. Pod borer insects, these feed on the inner flesh of the beans. The management, you use culia or mohani paso to trap the flies. Pick and bury the fruit with pod borer or dip in water and use a light, a light trap. Mole crickets, these are destroyed by insecticide. I will give the various types of insecticides shortly. In another slide, you will see the names of these insecticides. Diseases now, there are three, three basic types, the dry spots, which affects the body, pigeon, peas, and same. Then you may you would have bean common mosaic virus. These um, are seed borne and aphid transmitted. And thirdly, the rust disease, which is spread by rain splash, wind and animals, and hot, humid, stagnant conditions encourage the rust. The symptoms of the dry spots uh, the, um, it begins as water soak spots on the leaves and the area surrounding the, surrounding the spots may become yellowish brown and brittle. Pods have small watery spots which enlarge to irregular blotches then later become brown sunken and dry. They may spread to the fruit or vegetable and to manage the dry spot, you use limestone if soil is acidic or mulch. The bean mosaic virus, this disease appears as light green to yellow and dark green mosaic pattern developing on leaves. And often veins of leaves are dark green, whereas affected areas become light green yellow. Later on, leaves start downward curling and rolling and leaves become small. Plants infected at a young age cannot elongate and grow well. The management of the mosaic virus, you use a disease resistant variety if available and beans should not be grown in an area where viral disease already occurred previously. Sanitize the field and remove and destroy all weeds and infected plants and do not use the seed from the virus disease infected field. The symptoms of the rust are small red to reddish brown pustules on, on the sides of leaves and the management is to remove the leaves and burn. The insecticides which I told you are available in Trinidad. We have the Supertac, the Agrinate, Tabizol and Vapco, Vapco Top. These can be um, obtained at agro shops and there are various classes. Um, the SuperTAC is a class two denoted by a yellow color. And the, the Agrinate is a class one denoted by a red color, which means it's a toxic insecticide. It's red in color that denotes toxicity, high toxicity. Tabazole is a fungicide of a class U and Vacotop is a fungicide of class two, which it would be yellow. The, the label, meaning the label is yellow. So you have various ingredients these contain and it is noted that the Agrinate and Vacotop are both systemic types. The purpose 
they are, these are used as fungicides. Um, the, the last two are fungicides, Febazole and Vapcotop. The first two, Supertac and Agronate, are the insecticides. Okay, I've spoken about cultural practices of legumes, so it goes, it would be similar for that for, uh, as for the body, supports the growing stems, as I spoke about with stakes or trellises, managing pest and disease, I spoke of that. Then using a combination of environmentally friendly pesticides, um, that is another means of controlling pests in the in, in the field, never use seven on body be, peas or beans as that chemical could kill these plants. And IPM or integrated pest management is based on cultural and biological methods is the best approach for controlling pests and disease and pesticides should really be used as a last resort. Harvesting of, of the body it is harvested in the immature green stage, hence the term salad bean. Pods, pods are ready to harvest at seven to eight weeks after sowing, and the shorter type can be harvested in five to six weeks after sowing. The longer type should be harvested when pods are 12 to 18 inches long, and you pick the pods in the young stages every two to three days before the seeds mature or swell. Use fingers to carefully pick or pinch off the pods and try not to damage the flower head of the plant as this will reduce the bearing life and affect the yields and avoid pulling off the pods, which will cause the stem stripping and the plant could also die. Leave a few pods on the plant to provide the seeds for the next planting. Advantages of growing Bodhi. Bodhi is a low maintenance home garden food plant that can be easily grown throughout the year. It can be interplanted with vegetables and ornamentals in the home garden. It replenishes the soil nitrogen used up by other crops and is excellent choice for crop rotation. It can be grown in containers and Bodhi contains fiber, carbohydrates, calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium, as well as zinc and protein, uh, and are high in vitamins A, C, and B6. Legumes are similar to meat and nutrients, but with lower iron levels and no saturated fats. Uh, production costs for Bodhi. If you wish to, to plant Bodhi on, in a large way, you may want to plant, this will be a uh, costing for a um, uh, uh, one hectare plot. And you firstly start with land preparation, which will, for land preparation, you must brush cut, rotovate, drain, drain the land and, and you supply labor for this land preparation. And it, it the, Costing, as you would see in the final column, these are the rates and costings for land preparation. Planting of the actual planting, you, you firstly purchase the seed and then you supply labor for planting these seeds. You, you will put aside four mandates to plant 2.7 kilograms of seed. And we have the costings again on the last column. Fertilizing and manuring of these body, we buy a 12-24-12 fertilizer in, as well as a manure, a truckload of manure, and we uh, use uh, eight days of eight Mondays of labor. So this, this is the area I spoke of is, is 
0 0.4 hectares. This is the area we're looking at, which is a one acre. So this is this a one acre plot I'm, we are doing the cost info. Following fertilizing, we, we have weeding of the body where we apply contact herbicides, pre-emergent herbicides, and we use eight mandates of labor for, for the, these um, applications. After weed control, we look at pest control and we, we would have to apply broad spectrum insecticides as well as biological insecticides and soil insecticides. And the labor would be 4.8 mandates. And the costings are again shown in the third, in the last column. Then disease control, we use fungicides, soil fungicides and contact fungicides with 4.8 mandates labor to apply these um, disease control methods. Following that irrigation, we, we use eight mandates to supply irrigation for, the, for this one acre of crop. Then harvesting, it takes six to eight weeks after you, you will use 12.8 mandates of labor. And transportation, we use transportation for the purpose of fertilizer or chemicals, as well as to transport the farm produce to the markets for approximately six trips. And we have costings, as again shown, approximate costings. So for the final cost of these um, to, to cultivate and produce body field on a one acre plot, we should have a, a cost of $20,600. You should be able to get returns of $51,800. So your net return for planting a one acre crop of Bodhi should be uh, the difference being 31239 So the profits made are 31000 So this is just an idea of the, the production cost for an acre of Bodhi. And, so we have an idea now. Hi, Michelle, we have a question. Yes. Good afternoon. Maria. Yes, good afternoon, Maria. Hi, afternoon. I was good afternoon. wondering if you can um, plant body beans, like the body you get from the supermarket, if you could plant that. Well, the black eyed peas, and if you plant that, then it will go like body. So oh, these are remember these are different to the um the black eye and so the the, the body we have uh, um you you purchase the, the seeds from agro shops and remember it's at the national seed bank that is where you get these seeds to grow the body and so on so it is uh, really recommended that you 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 get the seeds you know Okay, so the black black eye peas in the grocery wouldn't grow like that. No, no. Remember, we don't grow all black right. eye at all in Trinidad. We don't have black eye in Trinidad, so that is we don't have. Uh, you know, oh. we, okay, we, I told everybody the same thing. No, the body is different. Remember, as I showed in the diagrams, the, the where the is epigeal, epigeal growth for the body, and the hypogeal growth is for the peas. But in, in any instance, it is recommended to purchase the, the body seeds, right? Let us look at the same beans. Um, same is also grown in Trinidad and it's the introduction to Trinidad is, is uncertain, but it is assumed to have arrived with the endangered workers from India in the late 1800s. Although 12 varieties are collect were collected in Trinidad, only three are grown commercially by farmers. This crop is adaptable and survives very well in diverse conditions, such as arid and humid regions. 
and it can be grown well in soils ranging from 4.4 to 7.8 pH. It is a vining plant and it grows to 20 feet with purple flowers on vines and um, trellises. They have green seed pods as shown in the, direct, the photograph. And these are the seeds that you see here on the right. The cultivation of same, we plant the seeds one to two inches deep, spaced at six inches apart. And if you're, if you're worried about the germination, poor germination, you can sow seeds closer and thin them when they are a few inches tall. So you can plant it a little closer than the two in the six inches apart. Seed should germinate in two to three weeks. Expect a lot of leafy growth before flowering starts and have supports in place when you plant the seeds. Once the vines find the support, they will train themselves to grow up and they don't have anything to climb. If they don't have any trellises in which to climb, they will tangle around themselves on the ground. So this is why it is vital that you have supports for these vines, um, the same vines. You'll see the diagrams of the um, same beans and the flowers. These are various types of beans, the, the, the varieties and some of the flowers of the same. But only three types are grown by the farmers right now in Trinidad. If the vines have few or no flowers, it could be it could be that they are not getting enough sunlight or they are getting too much nitrogen. Make sure the fertilizer you use has a low low first number that is the N nit the nitrogen being, being five and avoid the nitrogen supplements like fish emulsion or soy meal. So the fertilizer use must have a low nitrogen um, amount. Okay, we will have the, in the second half, I will continue um, to explain the other types of legumes and the, the other types that are grown in Trinidad, as well as some types that we don't have grown in Trinidad due to the um, climate that we have here is not suitable in, you know, for that. But I will continue in the second half, the other types of um, legumes that we, we still need to talk about. So we'll go to a five minute break now. Um, it's now 10 to, so at five to six, we will come back and we will continue in, in five minutes. Okay, uh, if there are no questions, we'll just go on a five minute break now, okay?
Okay, well, I, I think the five minutes are, is up. So we we back to the um, the webinar right now. Um, I saw a few questions in the chat, so, but um, I will just answer the one, the National Seed Bank that is located in Chagaramas, where the, um, orig the original Chagaramas Agricultural Development Project used to be located. And that's the, um, in the north, the western peninsula of in Trinidad, that is in that area. So in the second half, let us let us now go to the second half of the training where we will now talk about green beans. That is a different type of bean to the same that we spoke of earlier. These beans are grown in well-drained soils with acidic in an acidic environment uh, with a pH of 6 to 6.2. We plant seeds in one inch deep um, holes and be sure to water the soil immediately after planting and then regularly until they sprout. We don't let the soil dry out at any time. There are two types of the green bean, the bush beans and the pole beans. The bush beans are planted in rows of two and a half to three feet apart with seeds placed one to two inches apart. After plants, they germinate, thin the seedlings to three to four inches apart. Pole beans, they need some type of support on which to grow. So the support should be six to eight feet tall be sure a trellis, teepee, or fence or other support is in place before you seed. Plant the three to four bean, bean seeds per pole and place at least two to three inches apart with, and space the pole, these poles or trellises about three to four feet apart. Sowing of the green beans. Firstly, the beans do not like to be transplanted and are therefore best directly seeded into the, the garden. If it is done carefully, they can be successfully started indoors in peat newspaper or soil, po soil pots and transplanted then into the garden. Do not soak the seeds, however. Beans, beans tend to germinate poorly if they absorb too much water and crack. This also applies to planting seeds in overly wet soil conditions instead of water, water. Instead, you must water after planting or plant before heavy rain. So these are the um, type you can plant seed seedlings from pots or directly into the soil as shown here. Irrigating green beans. Green beans need an inch of water per week using a drip irrigation system for supplemental watering to avoid splashing soil onto the leaves, which can lead to soil borne diseases. Plants that are underwatered will stop flowering, and beans have a shallow, they have shallow roots, and mulching helps to keep them cool and preserve moisture in the soil. Water regularly if no natural irrigation occurs. Beans need about one inch of moisture every week, especially when flowering and developing pods. To minimize disease problems, avoid wetting foliage for prolonged periods and water early in the day for the fastest drying time. Fertilizing green beans. Because these beans are le legumes, they fix nitrogen in the soil, so avoid high nitrogen fertilizers. Instead, use a 10-20-10 fertilizer. So you have the 20 being phosphorus, and it should be high in order to feed the plants throughout the growing season, following the, the product and following follow all the directions of these um, products. Pole beans produce over such a long period that, that they 
benefit from a feeding or a side dressing of compost about halfway through the growing season. So you, you apply compost halfway through the growing season to, to, um, to, to, to apply the, the amount of nutrients required for, for proper growth. Harvesting of the green beans. The green beans are harvested in an ongoing task. And the more you pick, the more beans and plants will set. So it's a more ongoing process of harvesting the green beans. You can start to harvest anytime after beans form. And gardeners usually harvest the beans when they are young and tender, about the size of a small pencil. Overly mature beans can be tough and, and stringy. So green beans are ready to pick in 50 to 55 days after planting. And the majority of the harvest appears within a short period, usually two to three weeks. Succession pl planting is planting successive crops every two to four weeks for an extended harvest season. Pest and disease in green beans. Spider mites, that's a, a popular insect that attacks green beans. And these tiny pests pierce the leaf surface and suck the sap off, often causing leaves to die. Another pest would be the bean leaf beetle. And these girdle the stems near the soil line and chew holes on the plant's leaves. Other diseases, uh, anthracnose, bacterial blight, white mold, bean rust, and mosaic virus, and these affect the bean plants. That is anthracnose, you'll see it appearing in, in these sunken spots on the, um, on the pod here. And then we saw the, the leaf symptoms appearing on the leaf in this photo. We help prevent diseases by keeping the vines dry and don't overcrowd plants and provide plenty of good air circulation. And you can also look for plant varieties that are bred for disease resistance. Another bean which is not very popular but is grown in Trinidad is the um, padu bean. And as we call it, it comes from the French word um, poidou which means a sweet pea. Trinis tend to double up on everything. So the phrase um, doo doo darling comes from that name, Padu. And the, the photograph shows a picture of what the Padu bean looks like. The scientific name for that, this plant is Inga, and it is a neotropical nitrogen fixing shrub of the legume family. There are around 300 species, species around the world, but 10,000 years ago, primitive Amerindians began domesticating the Inga plant here right in Trinidad and Tobago for the beans and traditional Poadu of Trinidad and Tobago was the typical savanna and forest edge species called Inga um, Yes, so Inga is the, the, the species of the Padu bean, and it is in, we have them in Trinidad, but it is not very uh, not a very popular bean. The uses of, of this plant, this bean, we have Inga trees widely used agriculturally for, for shade, especially over cocoa, coffee, uh, and cocoa and coffee, which is in Trinidad and pepper plants. They are also utilized in lumber production for co construction and woodworking. Then in bush remedies, its medicinal properties include wound healing and bronchitis treatment. Then it is also used in production of an al alcoholic beverage called uh, char charichi. Then Padu's fruits, leaves and seeds are rich in vitamin A, B and C fiber, protein, and antioxidants. So this is the appearance of the padu on the tree, tree here. These are some facts about the padu bean. 
Most people compare the taste of the Padu fruit with vanilla ice cream, hence the popularity as ice cream being fruit. Then in countries like Peru, Colombia, Ecuador, the local people love ice cream bean and they call it um, various names. Um, the Spanish names could, would be like the guava or the paterna fruit, depending on the region. Unsurprisingly, the ice cream bean is especially popular among children and it can actually be healthy, a healthy snack alternative if the persons like the taste of vanilla ice cream. So it is a healthy um, fruit and, and a bean, it's a bean fruit. Another bean that we have growing in Trinidad is the tambran bean. And this is also a, a legume. The sweet tambran is a tropical fruit native to Africa, it comes from the evergreen tambran tree known as the tamarindus indica. And it, the tree produces long curved brown pods and it resembles large over mature green beans. So again, this is another legume. The trees can be seen in various parts of Trinidad, right? The, the sweet tambran. Then we also have in Trinidad the jack bean or the one eye bean. It, it belongs to the family leguminose and it is co called Chickasaw lima bean or sword bean, horse bean or gotani bean. It is a tropical climber producing long pendant green beans. It is native of the West Indies and Central America, but is now found scattered throughout the tropics. And it, it tolerates a wide range of rainfall, 650 to 2000 millimeters of rainfall, but evenly distributed throughout the year. So the jack bean has this appearance as shown in the photo photograph. the environmental requirements for growing the jack bean. It grows continuous, continuously under harsh conditions, even in nutrient depleted, highly leached acidic soils. It is resistant to drought and pests, but does not grow well in excessively wet soil. It will drop the leaves under extremely high temperatures and grows best at altitudes up to 1800 meters and temperatures of 15 to 30 degrees Celsius with soil pH of 4.5 to 8 and tolerates wide range of soils. So the beans, are uh, this white coloration with a um, purple flower. And it, it is described also as a, it's, it's a climbing perennial and it grows to two meters high with eight to 20 centimeters long trifoliate leaves and strong root system. Flowers are pink as shown in the picture above and they may be mauve or white as well at the base. Pods are 36 centimeters long containing one to two centimeters long ellipsoidal seeds. And pods and seeds are edible and used for food. The young pods being cooked as vegetable. And the whole plant, the pods and seeds are also used to feed animals. The flowers and fruits of the jack bean. Again, as we see here, the flower, and these are, these are the pods here. The flowers are typically rose colored, purplish or white with a red base. And then the pods now are light brown when ripe and ribbed near the upper sutia and may contain 20 seeds per pod. Seeds are white and smooth with a brown seed scar that is about a third the length of the seed. The common names of jack bean are the sword bean, the wonder bean, horse bean, chickasaw, lima bean. So these are some common names. 
and the uses. Um, it is grown for food fodder as a crop cover or green manure on depleted soils under harsh environmental conditions and become established in disturbed areas and it has potential to become invasive. As you can see in this picture, this is a field of the, the jack bean. And as a legume, it fixes nitrogen in the soil and so it needs no artificial application of nitrogen. And agronomically, it's sown as an annual cover for crops. If grown as a perennial intercrop, the plant needs strong, durable support as, as cocoa and coffee, corn, or and th those would be the um, supports for the for the bee, for the jack, um, jack beans. Seeds are used as a substitute for coffee in places like Cuba. The environmental impact of the jack bean, it is used in conservation agriculture with corn and cassava. And it is generally recognized as a soil improver. So in other countries like Mauritius, it is plowed for, for green manure for sugarcane after flowering. So it, it's a form of um, green manure to supply um, nitrogen to the soil. Then finally, the winged bean, this is the last local bean we have grown in Trinidad, but is not very popular, known as the asparagus peas or goa bean. It has four angled um, um, wings, which you can see in the picture. The mature pods are six to nine inches long with high protein content. So it has a, a, a very odd shape, as you see. And you will see further on um, the uses of this. The pod, the winged bean plant, produces pea-like beans with four winged edges. The pods are oblong, linear, straight, curved to long and, fl and flexuous, with four longitudinal serrate um, leaf, leafy wings. The, the cross section is a square with um, four corners tapering out into thin wings. So if it is cut and at the cross section, it will appear like a square. They are green, ye yellow, green, or purple in color. And they turn brown when fully ripe and has a waxy skin and white colored flesh. The pods are picked when young so that the pod and beans within can be eaten and the seeds are about half to one centimeter across, white, yellow or brown or black in color and with a small non endospermous shape. Pods have pleasant nutty flavors and delightful taste while the leaves have a mild spinach-like flavor and the flowers uh, compared to flavor of mushrooms. So this is the appearance of jack bean and it is uh, one of the legumes we have also in Trinidad, of the winged bean, yeah. The appearance, the colors I said as they are green, yellow, green, purple, purplish red wings and they turn brown when ripe and the shapes are oblong linear straight, 15 to 30 centimeters long. So these beans also grow on, on these, they, they have to have stakes you all as well and they grow along up on the stakes. The health benefits of the winged bean they prevent premature aging, reduce headaches mig and migraines, ensure healthy pregnancies, inflammation and sprains, and they prevent vision problems and weight loss and weakness. They help prevent diabetes and prevent asthma and increase immunity and fight colds. So in this pyramid chart, we see a, this is a vegetarian chart and the legumes are found in the second layer of this pyramid. So it, we, they are 
the requirement for legumes are normally two to three serving, servings, which means it should be taken moderately as compared to the other types um, of, of food, food, which are the um, carbohydrates shown at the bottom, the base of the pyramid, where you have to eat liberally uh, for in these um, vegetarian diets. You, you have liberal amounts in the carbohydrate section. Then you have the, you have semi-moderate in the fruits here, and then you have moderately in the um, in the legumes and the the fresh the, the fresh cheese and so on. So the second layer is where you have to have moderate consumption, and the sparingly um, section would be the vegetable fats such as oils and and so on. So as regards the health benefits, um, the, the winged bean is, is a very healthy um, legume. The winged bean is popularly known to as one species supermarket for nutrient dense green pods and the immature seeds, tubers, leaves and mature seeds. So they give it, for that reason, it's called one species supermarket. And this under, underutilized crop has potential beneficial traits related to its biological nitrogen fixation to support low input farming. So it is a herbaceous perennial legume and it has been identified rich source of protein with most parts being edible when appropriately prepared. Right, so that's the plant shown in the diagram, the, the photo. And finally, the, we have the peas, beans not grown in Trinidad and Tobago. We have a variety of them known as the soya bean, lentil, chickpeas or, or chana, which is around seven millimeters black eyed peas, red beans, and split peas. And these are the peas and beans which we do not grow here in Trinidad, but we use it in abundance for pre preparation of meals and so on. So as is shown in the diagram, the photo, you will see all the types of the peas and beans which we do, do not grow right here in Trinidad due to the temperature required for the growth of those beans, you know? So, soya beans in Trinidad, this is the, uh, the which we, we, we don't have it growing here. And it, the main input for the crude soybean oil in the production of soybean, it, it must be imported in that case. But this is the appearance of the, the soya bean. So it is cream in color and it has the green pod similar to our regular body and other legumes in Trinidad. Then we have the red beans also, which is not in, grown in here in Trinidad. They are small and oval shaped as shown in the diagram. And they have more delicate um, flavors and softer textures compared to the kidney bean. The small red beans are particularly popular in the Caribbean region, so everyone must know these beans. And the lentil peas, which is also another popular bean which we have in pea, peas which we have here, they are not grown in Trinidad and since the optimum temperature of the growth is usually around 24 degrees Celsius. So lentils are a bushy annual plant of the family Fabaceae. Faba and it is grown for the edible and shaped seeds, which are cooked and eaten. And it's about 16 inches tall, the plant, and the seeds grow in pods, usually with two seeds in each. So this is the plant, how it looks. And the origin, also unknown, it is grown widely in Europe, Asia, and North Africa. So we come to the end of 
another agricultural session on legumes. And it, we saw a wide variety and type of, of types, which are some are grown in Trinidad and some which are not, but we make a lot of use of, of peas and beans, especially persons who are veg on vegetarian diets and it's for healthy living and it is usually best to um, have these high protein um, meals, you know. So any questions, please feel free to ask. And we have um, the, the email which you can contact us through um, at this email, michelle.shaw at pscutt.com. Or you can contact the credit union through the different branches, Port of Spain, Arima, Chaguana, San Fernando, and Tobago at these numbers listed below. So if there are any questions that persons need to ask, please feel free. We have Lolita. Okay. Good afternoon, Lolita. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon, Lolita. Good nice afternoon, to... Michelle. Are you hearing me now? Yes, I'm hearing you now, yes. Okay. Sorry about that, right. Now I'm asking about the tamarind bean. You spoke yeah. about a tamarind bean. I know about a tamarind tree. No, yes. you said this tamarind bean is a sweet tamarind. Yes. But now, it's, it, it grows on a tree. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the legume grows on the tree. Uh -huh. And it, it's a, it, it can be seen in abundance in areas like beach and um, the areas, oh, yeah. all, there are lots of uh, those trees in Trinidad. But is it available at the feed bank as well in Chagaramas, this tamarind bean? Well, the persons could inquire. So you can inquire from the, um, feed, the seed oh. bank, yes. Because I, mm -hmm. I honestly didn't know about it. I only know the tree, the tamarind tree. Yes, because the, the tamarind tree is where the, the, the legume um, beans grow. So the, the tree is in abundance in Trinidad and it is a legume, it's right? It's a so, big tree. The one I know is a, it's a large tree, not a bean. And yes, it's not but, sweet, it's sour, it's sour. The one I know is sour. Okay, well, there are lots of sweet tamarind that is grown in beach area and it, and it will be in other areas as well in Trinidad. It is a very sweet um, tasting well, okay. tambra. Well, I didn't you know, know about that. Thanks a lot. I didn't know about tree, it. Yes. Mm, okay, thanks. Yes, sure. We have Joy. Good afternoon. Yes, Joy. You might need to unmute your microphone. Unmute. Yeah, yes, right. good evening. Good evening. Yes, that's sweet tambourine. We have it in Tobago, you know. Yes, it's very yes. popular. Yeah, and it's it very sweet. sweet. So you, yes, you sweet. cannot really, you know, say make, you know, you had a tambourine ball. Yes. You know, because you wouldn't get it's that, perfect. that no. sourness that you want, no. you know. Yes. So you, we eat it just like that. Yes. I, I have seen it many times. Yes, but I'm interested in that padu. Is padu bean? Yes, the padu. I've never, uh, yeah, I've never heard about that one at all. Yes, well, th that uh, I, I have done the research on that, and it is a, a plant that grows in Trinidad. Yes, and and they say that that it, it has that um, vanilla flavor, you know. Yes, yes, yes. I really would like to get one. I'll, I'll, after, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll research it. Thanks so much. Yes, no problem. Okay. Yes. We have Risha. Or, I don't, okay, I'm seeing the name Risha. Yes. Yeah, Risha. Thank you. Yes, good, good afternoon, Risha. Thanks for your um, talk. I came in a little late, so I don't know if one or two points you may have covered. Okay. But um, in a sense, I have two questions. Um, yes. 
one, the first question is, since you know Bodhi and some other legumes are vines, yeah. are they good to rotate with other crops, you know, crop rotation because they add yeah. nitrogen to the soil and then like how long is the life of a Bodhi plant? Because I was trying to grow mine in a, a pot and have it run on a, a chain. Yes, yes. Well, I, I gave the various spe specs on the, the life, life of the, the dur duration of the, the longevity of the plant in the, mm -hmm. during the presentation. Um, it is usually required that you, you, um, you, you have this on a continuous basis because if you don't um, pick two to three times um, a week, you know, you, you, it, the more you pick is the more it will produce. So okay. for, for plants like Bodhi, same, you have to, to pick them continuously so that it, 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 it springs, it keeps springing new, new, new um, fruits. Mm. And you, but it, it is a continuous plant, I think it's about six, 55 to 60 days. Okay. It is a long lasting plant, you know? Okay. And my other question is, I know, of course, you know, we often have pigeon peas as a companion plant to corn. Definitely. But um, what, other, what other crops can we grow with legumes? At least okay. that, that are, you know, companion that would be good companion, but like the body or that wing bean has caught my attention. <laughs> I'm quite intrigued by that. <laughs> yes, bean. yes. Um, yeah, because I see those, um, I thought, is some of those beans what is sweet pea? Because I see in wild, that kind of purplish flower, mm -hmm. purplish yes. white flower in the wild, you yes. know, running wild. So yes. is that so a bean that could you be, can consume? Could be, but the, the, these are plants that they are not that popular because it's not grown in the um, farm farming um, markets and so, mm -hmm. so you don't see it very pop as very popular um, legumes. So you will see them more in forested areas and those things. But but I mentioned it because they are grown in Trinidad, so it is good to know about them. So possibly if more research is done, they might start using them more in the, um, in the, in the um, as edible foods to, to be sold in markets. So this right. is why I mentioned it. Okay. But the, as far as uh, the plants that you can, you, 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 you can probably go grow corn and so on together with the body because remember, as I, as it was stated that they are nitrogen um, enhancers to the soil. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the body and, and legumes enhance the soil, it is recommended to have these um, companion crops so that they will benefit off of the nutrients supplied to the soil. So it is recommended that you have these companion plants with the body and so, so um, I, I would I would definitely um, endorse that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So we we looked at all the various types of beans. We looked at the various types of peas as well. And um, so at least persons who, who like to have a healthy diet and vegetarian diet, you know, these are the kinds of um, plants that you would look to try and grow in your, your backyard. And so these are the types of plants for, for the vegetarian type of diets, you know. So I look forward again to seeing you all at our next training next time. And as I said, um, participants will all receive certificates um, via email after the sessions in due course. Also the, the videos are being recorded and they, they will be put on the PSCU website on the YouTube um, channel. And that will be done in due course. So. Um, you all can look forward to hearing. If you have missed any sections of the presentation, you, there will be a repeat of it when you, when you go on to the 
YouTube channel of the PSCU website. So if there are any further questions, please feel free. And there will be a lot more interesting webinars to come. And I, I look forward to seeing all of you again. We have one more question, Michelle. Yes. Shelly. All right, thank you very much. But Michelle is not a question, but okay. a comment. I just want to thank you very much for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. Thank you, Shelly. This is very nice of you to, to com commend the presentation. I thank all of you. And I always try to um, give some uh, sort of input with regards to the engineering aspects to you know, not only the, 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 gym, the cultivation aspects, but it, whenever I could see the opportunity to give some technical aspects, I will do so in the future um, trainings that would be coming up. Thanks. Sure, okay, Shelly, thank you. Okay, with that being said, I wish to thank you all for attending. And I look forward to the next webinar, which will be coming up soon again. And, and it, it was a pleasure um, being with you all this evening. And I thank you all. And good, good evening and ha have a good, uh, good evening. All right.